The district Redbud, one of the special things I like is it becomes family. Um, I've become acquainted with, really acquainted and friends with a lot of these staff members. You get to know them, uh, we go out, we have events together, we have special things like tailgating together. It just becomes family and that's what I really like about it. We have so many um, diverse teachers here as far as how they teach and what they teach and it's really neat to want to try new ideas because you have lots of support from each other. If you just want to share a new idea, someone's always willing to take that idea from you or even help you improve it. There's just so much knowledge in our building that anything you want or need, someone in the building can help you out. The best part of being a parent is definitely the open communication between the teachers and the parents. So our district has been very uh, progressive in trying to get uh, what we do out to the public. So we have been uh, really good at pushing out with Twitter and Facebook and showing um, the community what's actually happening in our classrooms and in our buildings. We receive daily announcements. The teachers use certain apps where they're updating us on what the children are learning and specific activities that they're involved in. And then we also receive a weekly recap of both the grade school and the high school of what the children are involved in all week. Redbud is very unique in the fact that it's a small town district, but yet we have so many veteran and new teachers that are doing progressive things. Our district is trying new things, so even though we still have that small town feel, we're keeping up with the bigger districts in our area. The student body here is large enough that we have the opportunity to afford many different courses. Uh, there's foreign language, there's weightliftings, there's all kinds of opportunities to do things that outside of just the core courses. But also the student body is small enough that we get to know many of the students by name. You know, walking through the hallways, everyone's friendly, welcoming, always willing to help out each other. Um, the same goes to the district and the leadership and the teachers. Uh, and their, their involvement with the students as well. It feels like a humble place to be, like there's no negative vibes. Most of the people are pretty nice here. I've never met a teacher that I haven't been able to talk to or ask questions about, and it's good to have a feeling that you're always able to talk to teachers. They, they get to be, and to my opinion, they're my kids. And when they get to know you, they take that opportunity to come to you. They feel like this is a home to them. We are. In, in some regards, where their parents away from home. Redbud is very unique in the fact that we still have all the extras that a lot of schools have had to cut. We have band, music, computer, STEM classes, library, PE. We have aides that help us in our classroom. We have special ed departments. We have special ed aides. There's so many things that Redbud still has for students that a lot of districts no longer are able to provide. The town of Redbud is a unique community because it's, it's quaint enough that when you go out, the locals know who you are, they call you by name. You can still leave occasionally with your doors unlocked, your kids can play in the backyard, you can go for a walk at night. There's a lot of community activities to do in town. One that comes to mind now in this season of the holidays is the Beautification Committee. We look like a Norman Rockwell picture um, at Christmas time. We have tons of restaurants and places to go. And you can just kind of hang out and, and be part of the community that maybe in a larger town you get lost in, but Red Bed you do. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to, to uh, the Castle of the Musketeers with the home volleyball game between the New Eighth and Yellow Jackets and your Redbud Lady Musketeers. The Musketeers come into tonight's contest with an overall record of 8, 24, and 2 with a conference mark of 2 and 7. With the highlight so far of the year is uh, playing Belleville East last night and defeated the Lancers. So Lady Musketeers are coming off a big win and hopefully they can carry that over into tonight's game. Yeah. The uh, Nathan's Yellow Jackets have come into tonight's game with a 1-21 and 21 overall record with an 0-9 conference mark. 
So uh, this game is shaping up good, Ben, for the, for the Lady Musketeers. And yeah, I think uh, Coach Legender may have the, the ladies all fired up for tonight. It is senior night. So yeah. uh, I think the ladies should be fired up for tonight's contest. Yeah, last home game, I believe, in the full-size yes. castle, not the mini castle. Yeah, the full-size castle, that's right. <laughs> that's right. It's nice sitting here in the, in the big castle. Yeah. So as I mentioned, tonight is senior night. The, the Lady Musketeers have eight graduating young ladies that have played volleyball for for the school here at the castle for four years, and uh, they're looking, I'm sure they're all excited about tonight's contest. Yeah, hopefully they can come out tonight, big win. I think they've struggled a bit at home. Every yeah. game I, I've filmed. Uh, <laughs> well, they well, come out hot, they come out hot a lot of times, and sometimes they cool down quick, yeah. so hopefully they can keep that fire going. Well, hopefully it's not you that, that's causing the, I, the, the bad streak I, here. I've, I've, I've thought castle. of that, I've thought of that. <laughs> I didn't want to say it, but it, <laughs> well, I I'm thought hoping I'd say it's not me. It. Thought I'd throw it out there. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the Lady Musketeers are coached by assistant coaches Jenny Homan and Laura Mudd. And as I mentioned earlier, head coach is Aaron Legender. The uh, Lady Jackets assistant coaches are Aileen Duchnik, Shelby Schmigala, Susan Yanger, and head coach is Kyla Patton. So the Lady Musketeers are still doing a warm up. We had a little, a slight delay here tonight as it was senior night and, and the proud parents all came out on the floor with their, with their daughters and, and got their recognition because, you know, not only with the, with the ladies and the coaches, you know, giving hard work and, and sacrifice to play the sport, but, but the parents do also, Ben. Oh, absolutely. You know, they, they, they've got to, in the earlier, in the earlier years, they, uh, they had to get either early dinners or, or get them to practices and back in time and still have to work on schoolwork yet. So a lot of dedication, not only with the young ladies, but also on the parents' side. Yeah, when you're a student, I think you take it for granted. But then as you, you get older, as I am, and kids start getting <laughs> into things, you realize how much how much of a sacrifice it really is. Yeah, all of a sudden you get on that parent side of the ball and it's like, wow, I didn't realize my parents did all that for me. <laughs> yep. <laughs> So the uh, freshman won in two sets. Freshman won in two sets, okay. JV won in two sets. Two sets. So, so, so hopefully the, uh, the uh, varsity squad saw the dominance of the freshman and JV squad and can maybe uh, turn it into two straight sets tonight so absolutely. they can get a nice, nice home win here on senior night. That's what we're hoping for. So something new they've added since the last time I was here was the banners. Yeah, I, I, I did see that. I was, I was checking that out, and I'm a little confused on the football side of things as far as there were, in, here in, in volleyball and, and in basketball, the Cahokia Conference has three divisions. They have the Kaskaskia, which has Dupo, Lebanon, Marissa, New Athens, Steelville, and Valmar. The Illinois division has Carlisle, Chester, Oakville, Redbud, Sparta, and Westlin. And the Mississippi division has Central, Columbia, East Alton, Wood River, Freeburg, Roxana, and Salem. So in football, I know Columbia and Freeburg are no longer in our conference. Right. Um, a lot of teams I mentioned are in the conference, but I'm not sure in football how that division is broke out. I don't think there's three divisions of football. I think they only have two. Gotcha. Yeah, I'm not sure how that shakes. How that? How's that work? Has it always been something like that it's, between sports? Well, in I mean, football, they've usually, well, before we, when we had all these extra teams come in, right. we just had one conference. Then it got down to two divisions. But, uh, you know, all the conference realignments this year, uh, some conferences lost teams, and, and uh, you know, Chester wanted to come and play teams closer to their home field, you know, along with some of the other schools. So uh, it really it really added a lot of teams to the Cahokia Conference. Which there for a while, it seemed like Cahokia Conference was getting picked other conferences of, of picking some of the better teams but right but uh, now that I mean the conference stacks up for basketball and volleyball anyway I mean you're looking at 15 teams uh, foot you know uh, Dupo has football Lebanon does not Marissa does not uh, Northern Steelville Valmar do not Carlisle does Chester does Oakville does not Redbud Sparta Westland do 
uh, Central, uh, Roxana, and Salem all have football teams. So, uh, and I didn't mention Columbia and Freeburg. They do have football, but they are not in the Cahokia Conference. In okay. Football. Probably nice to have a little variety, but maybe some of those rivalries. Yep. Or, or if they are in the conference, we don't. They're not in our division of it. I'm okay. not really sure how Columbia and, and Freeburg stack out. I just know that the uh, the football team did not have to play either one this year, which okay. both teams were pretty strong in, in, on the football yeah. side, on the gridiron. So the Musketeers are still warming up, along with the Yellow Lady Jackets. So it looks like there's a nice crowd here tonight. I know it is senior night, so probably brought out a few more, but uh, looks like we have some mascots down there. Yeah, it's a couple, couple dinosaurs. Pretty cool. I saw a dinosaur and a hot dog earlier. Oh, and a hot dog? Okay, I just I saw the dinosaur. I thought maybe we had a yeah, couple there dinosaurs. There's a hot dog. <laughs> That's oh, fun. <laughs> the dinosaur was, coming, was hiding. I thought maybe you ate him up. <laughs> yeah, the student section always has a different theme. I'm not sure what if it's just a couple costumes down there or we're going to see more later, but uh, they've had red, white, and blue, um, jersey night. Uh, that's all that I can remember off the top of my head, but they do a good job. Well, it is good, good to see the, uh, you know, the students getting active in, in the uh, sports. I mean, you know, on the, on the football field, there was a pretty good student uh, contingent. Uh, volleyball looks like they have a pretty good group coming, and you know basketball is right around the corner. So uh, the students are getting behind their, their their teams and supporting them, which you know the players need that. They work hard, play hard. They need that support, especially on their own home court. Oh, absolutely. I know Ben, you played a little little hoop, and uh, I'm sure it made a big difference to you whenever it was a home game or away game with the uh, with the support from the student section and, and the fans. Yeah, our our class and. The underclassmen below us, they really traveled well. They, they made sure we always had a good crowd and we could hear them. Oh, yeah, and it, face, it does one, it face does wonders. Paint and they, they did it all. It yeah. was a lot of fun. It does wonders when you're out there on the floor and maybe you might not be having the best night, but, but you know, you hear that support behind you and, and sometimes it can pull you out of a little funk you could be in and, and uh, get things back on course for you. Oh, yeah. They were good at giving the other team a hard time too <laughs> throwing them oh, off I, so. I can't believe that <laughs> no our fans wouldn't do that And welcome back. We had to take a little break. Uh, welcome back to the Musketeer Castle. This is Bob Zipf and Ben Koopman on the Southern Illinois Sports Report. Scissor, home, are part of Oak Nine Productions. That's so we're right. proud. We're glad to be here tonight to uh, give you this game. If you can't be here, you can see it on YouTube or Facebook. The cameraman zoomed in on our one of our officials this evening. Oh, wow. It's like they're yep. getting geared up, watching for illegal hits, seeing who the hitters are. Yep. <laughs> hey, welcome so. back. So uh, back to the castle. Again, Bob Zipfel, Ben Koopman here with Scissor, Southern Illinois Sports Report, part of Oak Nine Productions. Getting closer to the beginning of the game for the national anthem. The Lady Jackets are still warming up. The Lady Musketeers have finished their warm-ups and have headed into the locker room for their last minute advice and strategy from Coach Legender. Oh, ben, we do have two dinosaurs. There are two down there now. Yeah, I thought I saw two a while ago. Didn't think my eyes were Playing tricks at me. Oh yeah. All right, at this moment we're gonna take a short break. All right, we'll be back in a few minutes, folks, so don't go away, we'll be back in a minute.
At Farmers, we've seen almost everything to know how to cover almost anything, like the sister sideswipe. And we covered it, May 2nd, 2020. Call my dad, Danny Schultz, with Farmers Insurance. Redbud Industries is a third generation company located in Redbud, Illinois. It is a fast paced, innovative company recognized worldwide as an industry leader in coil processing. The really neat thing about working at Redbud Industries is the way that it impacts so many people's daily lives. We are building equipment that slits steel, cuts steel into pieces, and is then provided to original equipment manufacturers. So really, on a daily basis, you could be interacting with some form of steel that has been cut from a machine that we've built. It's really neat stuff. My favorite part about working at Redbud Industries is the family atmosphere. From the competitive wages to the excellent insurance and benefits, all the way down to the team building events, they just make me and my wife and my children feel right at home. I feel like I can come to management if I have an issue. I feel like I can present my ideas and feel like I'm being heard and see those ideas either come to fruition or at the very least progress be made. I think the team here at Redbud Industries is top of the line. I've worked several other places and they just don't compare to the group of people here at Redbud. You can genuinely see that everybody wants the company to excel. There's always someone there to help me. I can look on my left or my right, and if the guy next to me can't help me, he will go to the next guy, and someone's there to help me out. I feel so blessed to have been able to find something so close to home. The community itself, everyone is really involved, and it's a great place to live and work. They recognize the potential in everyone and put you where you fit best. If you're interested in a lifelong career at Redbud Industries, please go to our website for more information or to apply. And welcome back to the Castle of the Musketeers, announcing the Redbud Musketeers seniors, Maggie Dufren. Number 32, Hannah Seavers. Gracie Porter. Gracie Porter. Megan Henry, the senior, announcing all seniors tonight. Center number eight, a senior, Kayla Nettemeyer. And Kaylin, Kayla Nettemeyer. Defensive specialist number six, a senior, Addison Number Leifer. six for the Lady Musketeers, Addison Leifer. Middle hunter number two, a senior, Chloe And number two for the Lady Musketeers, Chloe Wild. And a lead row, number 11, a senior, Katie And number 11, Schneider. Katie Schneider. The Musketeers are coached by And Aaron again coached by coach head coach, Aaron Legender. So, uh, looks like we're starting all seniors tonight, Ben, along with the, uh, seemed like uh, uh, Lady Jackets also had a lot of seniors. I heard a couple of sophomores in there, but little little experience and little youth. Yeah. So, best of both worlds. So, we are going with uh, experience in our heavy senior laden lineup tonight. So, the Lady Musketeers are at the sideline getting your last minute instructions from Coach Legender. And they are taking the floor. Still waiting for the Lady Jackets to come out of their, their huddle from their, from their coach. And they come out, so the ladies have all sitting at the, at the far baselines. 
and getting ready to take the positions to start tonight's game between the New Athens Lady Jackets and the Red Bud Lady Musketeers here at the Castle in Red Bud, Illinois, home of the Musketeers. Refs are getting all their, checking all their subs and who's starting. Yep. That always confused me. I mean, they're in and out, they're in and out, back and forth. I know. We're, they we got to keep pretty good track of that. Looks like we just made a substitution before the game started. <laughs> so, uh, looks like we're getting ready to start. Number eight, Kayla Nettemeyer set to serve first for the Lady Musketeers. Overhand serve. Set up to the front line. First and point. point for the Musketeers, four hits. Yep. So uh, good hard serve by Kayla. Got the ball, the, uh, the young, the young uh, Lady Jacket couldn't get it up to the net to get it over, so the next serve from Kayla. Another hard overhand good serve. One. Bumped up to the front, set to the spiker. In the net. And it looks like a net violation. Another point for the Lady Musketeers. So the Jackets tried to get that one home, but uh, had net violation. Next serve from, from Kayla. Oh, a knuckleball, no spin on that serve. Good overhand serve. Third hit goes over to net, bumped up by the Musketeers. Set up, gonna have to bump it back across. Free bump ball. pretty deep. Hey. Little miscommunication by the Lady Jackets. And another point for the Musketeers. So quick three nothing start, Ben. Great start. Love to see it. So Kayla Nettemeyer to serve again. Overhand serve. Bumped up to the front row to set. No spike by the Jackets. Musketeers bump it back over. Oh, wow. Great play. That was a great play. It almost fell on the uh, Jackets side for another redbud point, but Jackets are able to get it over. Musketeers knock it back. An overhand fist hit by the Lady Jackets. The ball is down, so... Uh, the uh, Musketeers came out with uh, three three quick points. The Lady Jackets scored a point there, so lead three to one here in the first period of game one. Lady Jackets set to serve, overhand serve into the net. So a good point for the Musketeers. That gets a 4-1 lead. Substitution now for the Musketeers. Number four, Gracie Porter comes into the game along with number 14, Allie Zipfel. This looks like Grace Porter is set to serve. Southpaw, overhand serve, hits it high and long. Never seen her serve from that side before, but whatever works for her. Whatever Good works play. is whatever it takes. Set to the front row to spike. Oh, good oh, save by the Jackets. Bump back over, push back across the net. Bump to the front, a set. Here comes a big spike. In! Oh, what a shot! Ali Zipfel hammered that home in the far corner. This Lady Musketeers a 5-1 lead. That was a great set by the Musketeers, and Ali just drove that thing home. Next serve by Ali, overhand. Bumps to the front of the net, did, oh, got over the net. And it's a violation against the Jackets, point for the Musketeers. So Gracie Porter still serving for the Musketeers. Serve with that left hand from the left side. Ooh, good hard serve. And Nathan's couldn't handle that serve, Ben. They went down to try to dig it up and, and it went out of bounds. So 7-1 lead now for the Lady Musketeers. Gracie's done a great job serving all year long. Just always consistent, over the net, always as I say it. <laughs> you might have jinxed her a little I bit there, Ben, her. but. I think she was trying to go for that far corner. It was left unguarded by the Jackets, but uh, hit a little long. So the Jackets start to serve. Now they're down 7-2 to, to the Musketeers. Serves over, set up to the front row to Alley. Alley hammers it home again. The Jackets don't have an answer for Alley smoking that ball straight down on those spikes. Number 20, Megan Hen Henry now to serve for the Musketeers. Lady Musketeers lead the Lady Jackets 8 to 2. Substitution. Claire Dewald comes into the game. 
This looks like we're adding some height on that front row. Another good serve by the Lady Musketeers. Looks like a net violation against the Jackets. Another point for the Lady Musketeers. Substitution for the Musketeers. Maggie Dufresne into the game. Looks like we need a setter for that front line, so Megan Henry still serving. 9-2 lead for the Lady Musketeers. Megan's another Southpaw. Two Southpaw servers in a row. Oh, and just didn't, couldn't quite get it high enough. Served it into the net. Point for the Jackets. 9-3 now, Musketeers. Jackets getting ready to serve. Another substitution coming up for the Jackets. It's like number 15, Brooke Gunter, to serve for Lady Jackets. Musketeers have set their defense up. Overhand serve. Oh, nice dig by the Musketeers. Set to the front row. Oh, little push over the net. Okay. Nathan's still battling. Gets it back across for the Musk for the Jackets. Set for the Musketeers. And another set. And spike for Allie Zipfel. Allie hammered that home again. She's got that cross-court spike down pat right now. She does. Number so Claire Dewald now to serve for the Musketeers. Ladies are winning 10 to three. Got a right-handed server now, jump, jump serve. Nerithens digs it up, sets it to the front, pushes it over. Musketeers bump it back up to the front and a set over to Alley. Oh, that was blocked, was blocked, but back by the Musketeers, good save. Oh, and oh, a good nice play, play by the Musketeers. Oh my, Kayla Nedemeyer. I think the Jackets thought she was going to spike that over, and she just dinked it across the net. Good point for the ladies. 11-3, Musketeers lead. Claire Dewald still serving. Jump serve again. Great serve. Jackets get it back across, up to the front. Musketeers, oh, not, couldn't quite get the, uh, the set there, and the ball went into the net, so it's a point for the Jackets. 11-4, Redwood leads New Athens. Served by the Jackets. Comes across, the Musketeers were able to get it across the net. Set up for the Jackets with a spike. Oh, nice save by the ladies. Set up to Alley. Another spike. That's another one. It's tip, wasn't it? Looks like the there officials say the ball was tipped <laughs> on the spike attempt. The ball went out of bounds on the spike, but it was tipped. Point, Musketeers. Ladies lead 12 to four. 32, Hannah Seavers into the game now. Maggie Dufresne going to serve for, I'm sorry, number six. Addison Leifer serving now for the ladies. Good strong overhand serve, goes deep. Jackets get it, knock it back across. Musketeers gonna set up to the front row. Couldn't get it there, so it's knocked back across. Oh! Good play hit from the back row by Katie Schneider, and the Lady Jackets just couldn't handle that powerful hit. So the score now is 13-4, Musketeers. Addison Leifer still serving, doing her routine. Strong overhand serve. Could not be handled by the Jackets. That was a powerful serve, Ben. Yeah, it ate the, uh, ate the defend defender, is that the correct word? Yeah, well, <laughs> close enough. <laughs> Yeah, the, the Lady Jacket just couldn't quite handle that serve. No. So it's 14-4 now, Musketeers. Next serve by Leifer is a good serve. Hits it high and deep. Hits the basketball. Oh, the, I tell you, the Jackets almost saved that. That serve was hit up and it was bounced around the basketball stanchion. And the ladies tried to get it back across but couldn't. So a point for the Musketeers. And uh, it's 15-4. We're going to take a uh, small break. We'll be back in a few.
And welcome back to the Castle of the Musketeers. Bob Ziffel, Ben Koopman with Scissor Sports Network, part of Oak Nine Productions. Lady Musketeers, there was a timeout called by the Jackets. Musketeers have a pretty comfortable 15 to four lead. Number six, Addison Leaf, are still serving for the Musketeers. So we'll see if that timeout messed with her mojo on the serves. Comes to the line, good strong hit again. And the Jackets could not handle that Didn't serve. at all. The young Jack, Lady Jack in the back row tried to dig it up, but uh, just couldn't get it up high enough, and the ball fell to the ground. So Musketeers now lead 16 to four. Addison Lee for still serving. Another strong overhand serve. Ball's bumped up to the front, into the net. The other point, Musketeers. So that New Athens timeout didn't quite break the mojo of, of uh, of Addison and her serving. So 17-4 Lady Musketeers here at the castle. Overhand serve, pretty deep. Oh, a little too deep. Bowing out of bounds, but a, but a great run of serving for Addison Leifer. And Musketeers have a 17-5 lead. No Athens now will be serving. Number 13, Savannah Srogas. Overhand serve. That was close to the line, but the Musketeers saved it, but could not do much else with that, Ben. Uh, couldn't get it back over the net, and uh, point point now for the Noathans Yellow Jackets. Red, but still leaves 17-6. Savannah still serving. That was a better dig by the Musketeers, get it set to the front row. Spike, blocked by the Jackets. Saved, back over. Musketeers pound it deep, and it's in. Damn. Kayla Nedemar wasn't going to bump that up and set it. She took that <laughs> straight from the north yeah. side and banged it back across for a point, Musketeers. 18-6 now for the lady, Musketeers. Katie Schneider now serving. Overhand jump serve, hard serve, hit to the side. Nathan's gets it back across. Saved by Schneider, set to the front, and a dig across, and a point. Megan Henry, I think the Jackets are expecting a big spike there, and she saw that and just pushed it over the net with a little dink and got a point. 19 We've 6 caught Musketeers. caught them off guard a couple times that way. Yes, they have. So the serve by the Musketeers gets the ball over. New Athens gets it back. Bumped up to the front, set, and it looks like a line violation. The bump came up too uh, close to the net. The Musketeers tried to save it, but uh, had a violation. So a point for New Athens. 19-7, favorite Lady Musketeers here at the castle. Substitution by Nathans. Number 16, Emma Bone comes into the game to serve. Overhand serve, good, good play by the Musketeers, set up to the front row. Gets it across, saved by New Athens. New Athens pushes it back. Oh, the Musketeers hit it back across. But the good play by the Musketeer front line goes for naught as the ball did go out of bounds, was not in. Point, New Athens. Redbud leads 19 to eight. Emma Bone still serving. Hits it deep, and it's a point for the Lady Jackets. That was a good hard serve, Ben. She hit that a lot. Yep. The, the Musketeer for back line was playing up, and she hit it pretty deep, and they weren't sure if it was going to be in or out. And last second last, decision. Last Could second decision didn't work out, so 19-9. Musketeers still lead. Saved by the Musketeers on a deep serve. Bumped across. And a point, Musketeers. Both teams are setting it back and forth across, and the Musketeers just took it and Knocked it over to net for a point. 29 now leading. Kayla Nedemar serving. Hard serve. Serves it pretty deep. Gets it over. Musketeers tip it back. Set goes across deep. Musketeers get it set up to the front row. Oh, blocked by the Lady Jackets. Hannah Seavers tried to pound that one across, but uh, to no avail as the Nathan's team was able to, to block that, that spike. So Nathan's now serving. It's 20-10. Favorite of Musketeers. And New Athens serve goes out of bounds. Number nine, Kaylee Younger hit that ball really hard, but didn't have enough downspin, and the ball sailed out of bounds. 
21-10 now, Musketeers. Gracie Porter now serving. Left side of the court, southpaw. Good hard serve, gets backward spin. Nathan's on her third hit, does not get it across. Point, Musketeers. It's now 22-10 for the Lady Musketeers. Gracie Porter still serving. Oh, knuckleball serve. Second hit goes up, third hit for the Jackets goes over. Musketeers save it, bump it up to the front. Ladies get it across, saved by Noathans. Noathans gets it back over. Gracie saves it, back over, third hit now for the Musketeers, gets it across the net. Noathans sends it back over, Redbuds gonna set it up for a big spike. Oh, and the ball sails out of bounds. Allie Zipfel tried to hit that corner and just couldn't get the down spin on the ball. Oh, it looks like that ball was tipped, I'm sorry. A tip, so that was a good spike. So Redbud now leads 23 to 10. Late call by the officials on that tip. Yeah, Gracie fooled, gets the serve over. Musketeers have it. Third hit is across and down. Maggie Dufresne with the point for the Musketeers. 24-10 now, ladies. Gracie Porter still serving. Good hard serve, deep. Nathan's bumps it up, third hit now coming up, goes over, and it's in. Good spike by the Lady Jackets by number one, Candace Roskowski. And now the score is 24-11. Lady Musketeers over the Lady Jackets. Emma Hager set to serve for the Jackets. She gets the ball over, bumped up, set to the front row. Ball is hit over by the Musketeers, no point, saved by the Jackets. And it's down! Right. The Jackets could not get the ball over. Point, Musketeers! So the end of game number one. The Lady Musketeers defeat the Lady Jackets, 25 to 11. We'll be back in a few moments. My name is Tom Castell, and I am a family nurse practitioner at Redbud Regionals Express Care Clinic. I chose a career in medicine because I was really wanting a career where I could make a difference in people's lives. I really wanted a job that it was my sole purpose just to help people. I really want them to come in, feel comfortable, let them know I'm listening to them as a person and truly care about them like I care for one of my own family members. So in the Express Care Clinic, we see all types of patients. We will treat any strains, sprains, the common cold, coughs, and if you have any questions and, and you're not really sure where I should go for this, that's why the Express Care Clinic is here too, so that we can point you in the right direction. We know that illness and certain conditions aren't planned, and so that's why we tried to make sure that we were available for uh, people no matter what time it was. And so our staff is here till 7 p.m. and then also we're available on weekends as well so that way you can get the care you need no matter when it is. And welcome back to the castle. Bob Ziffel, Ben Koopman, Scissor Sports Network, part of Oak Nine Productions. So Ben, Musketeers take game one. 
And uh, Norathan starts game two here with a serve deep. Ball's hit, Norathan blocks it, brings it back across. Musketeers now on her third hit. Get it over, that was a little confusion there. Norathan sets it up, just Norathan's third hit. Good save by the Musketeers. Pushes over to the front row for the spike. Mm. The Jackets are able to save it. Third hit goes over. Does not make it over for the Jackets. Point, Musketeers. Yeah, Musketeers came out hot and they kept kept the foot to the pedal. They did, they, they kept their, their foot on the gas pedal and, and uh, just really didn't let Noathans get anything going. So uh, first serve of the game was by the Jackets. They were not able to score. The Musketeers take the first point. Is that Gracie Porter set to serve for the Musketeers between Gracie and, and uh, Addison Leifer. They had a lot of serves in that, in that first game. So Gracie's, Gracie's hit comes over and not handled by the Jackets defense. Point, Musketeers. So Gracie Porter still serving. Hard serve deep. Dug up by the Jackets. Her third hit does not make it over the net. So those hard, deep serves have the New Athens defense scrambling, trying to get the ball across. So the Musketeers now lead 3-0. Gracie's next serve is a hard one, shorter serve, but really hard. And a point, play. Musketeers! New Athens couldn't handle the serve. All they could do is hit it over the net to the front line of the Musketeers, and it's all over after it gets to that front line. Down for a Red Bud score. Gracie's next serve is deep. Second hit by the Jackets, gets it to the front, goes over. Musketeers get it. Set to the front line, not able to get the spike, bump it across. Third hit now for the Jackets, goes over. And the Musketeers couldn't quite handle it. The, the hit by the Jackets wasn't deep and it wasn't long as in that no man's land. And the Musketeers just couldn't quite handle that. That play by the Jackets offense. So 4-1 now to score. Redbud leads New Athens here at the castle. And the New Athens serve is for a point. The serve was pretty deep. The bump came up, but the bump came too close to the net. Musketeers weren't able to pull it out, so another point for the Jackets. 4-2 now, Musketeers. Serve comes up, bump to the front net. Musketeers knock it over to their third hit. Set up for New Athens with the spike. Good save by the Musketeers. Here comes a set to the front row. Oh, good save again by the Jackets. That almost was down. The third hit just goes over, just gets it back across the net. Serve again to the Musketeers. Oh. And the, sp the spike was not able to happen. Point for the Jackets, 4-3 now. Timing was just a little off there. Timing was just a hair off. Next serve by the Jackets comes across deep. Musketeers bump it up to the front, set up to the front row. The spike, home! Oh! Time, Allie timing Zipfel. was right on there. She had the timing set for that one. No doubt, that was a no doubter. Allie Zipfel hammered that ball home. Musketeers now lead 5-3. Megan Henry serving for the Musketeers. Jump serve, left-hander. Gets it over. Set up to Nathan's front line, they push it across. Musketeers got it set to the front row again to Allie. Hammers it, oh, down! Allie Zipfel with another vicious spike. Point, Musketeers. She's Six. having fun out there. She is having fun. You can see that <laughs> smile on her face. When that ball's near, she looks like she's smiling already. <laughs> Musketeers lead 6-3. Megan Henry still serving. Left-handed jump server. Good strong overhand serve. Nathan from the serves just knocks it over the net. All they could do, set to Alley. Oh, good save by the Jackets. Pushed back across. Another set by the Musketeers to the front row. Point! <laughs> Chloe Wild hammered that one home. New Athens couldn't handle that. 7-3 now Lady Musketeers with the lead over New Athens. Megan Henry still serving. Oh, good hard deep serve. Not being able to handle it by the Jackets. Point! Musketeers! 
No, he just couldn't handle that vicious serve, Ben. No, she's, she's sending him in hot over there. Comes the next serve, serve from Megan Henry. Deep. Nathan's tried to get it across, tried to push it across, but to no avail, Chloe Wild jumped up, put it right back into him on the floor. Point Musketeers. Megan Henry still serving. Another jump serve. Deep to the other corner. Good, good hit play by the Nathan's team to get it back across. Pump to the front. Set by the Musketeers, set to the other opposite side. No point as Northern is able to save it. Just bumped across, back across again. And point, Musketeers. Northern's tried to set that up to their big hitter, and uh, the set was to no, not a very successful set and fell to the ground. Musketeer point, now leading 10-3. Next serve by Megan. Didn't quite get it high enough into the net, so point for the Jackets on the uh, service attempt by Megan Henry. 10-4 now in favor of the Musketeers. Red Bud's been doing a great job of just hitting their marks on their serves. That they have, they've been getting them deep or into the right spot. And the first serve by the New Athens Yellow Jackets by Reese Duquette, served out of bounds, point Musketeers. So the Lady Musketeers now lead 11 to four. Substitution by the Musketeers. Aubrey Peel now into the game to serve. Overhand serve comes over. Good downward spin. Nathan's digs it up. Third hit gets it over the net. Musketeers bump it back up to the front. Set to the front row. Spike. Point. Chloe Wild. I think Nathan's keeps thinking. Uh, Ali Ziffel's going to spike that down, and they've been rotating the defense over her way, but now, now Chloe's hammering them home. So we have uh, a timeout call with the Musketeers leading 12 to 4. And we'll have a few commercial breaks. We'll be back in a moment. And welcome back to the castle from the timeout called by New Athens. Musketeers have a 12 to four lead. Back at the castle, the Scissor Sports Network, Illinois Sports Report, part of Oak Nine Productions. Bob Zippel, Ben Koopman here with the play-by-play. -play. New Athens finally comes out of their timeout. And we're getting ready for the next serve. From Aubrey Peel. Strong overhand serve, pretty deep. Bumped up to the front line, set up by the Jackets. Net violation. Hit the uh, the uh, the top part of the net, so it goes out of bounds, so it's Musketeer point. 13-4 Musketeers. Aubrey Peel still serving. Another hard serve, good downward spin. Bumped up to the front, just able to save it barely. Oh, and Chloe Wild. The Jackets just tried to knock that ball over the net, but not in Chloe's area. She got up high and just sent it right back to the floor. Point, Musketeers. 14-4 now, Musketeers. Aubrey Peel still serving. Throws it to the middle of the floor, bumped up to the front, set up. And a point for the Jackets. They dinked the ball over. The Musketeers were expecting a hard spike, but the, the dink gets the ball down for, for a point. 14-5 now to score. Musketeers leading New Athens. Candace Roskowski set to serve. Gets it across. Up to the Musketeer front row. Bump goes across the net. Point, New Athens. The bump from the back row, Ben, came up too far, and the Musketeers weren't able to save that. I couldn't Four. quite tell what happened there. Did she get a hand on it or just didn't uh, get to it at all? No, the bump just came up too, too far, and she couldn't get to it. So it's now 14-6 to score. 
Set up to the front row, back to, to Chloe. Nathan's able to save it. Nathan's tries to hammer it from the back row. To no avail, into the net, point, Musketeers. 15-6 now, Lady Musketeers leading. Substitution for the Musketeers. Addison Leifer back in. Addison had a lot of serves that last game. I think she served about six, seven, eight points. Serves it pretty deep. Nathan's bumps it up. Hits it across. Point. No Athens. That New Athens spike hit the top of the net and rolled across and hit the floor on the Musketeers' side. So the defense was there, but uh, lucky break for the Lady Jackets. 15-7 now to score. No Athens, or Redbud leading New Athens. Musketeers take the serve and bumped it up. Or was not able to save it as it goes out of bounds. Point for New Athens. Musketeers still lead 15 to eight, the score. Savannah Strogus is serving for New Athens. She gets it across. And point for the Jackets. I'll tell you that uh, the young lady for Savannah, she's had some wicked serves here, and Musketeers can't handle that serve right now. 15-9 to score for the Musketeers are leading New Athens. Savannah still serving. Musketeers bump it just across the net. Point, New Athens. Musketeers bumped it across, but to the front line of the Jackets. And number 10, Peyton Bilkey, put it home. So a comfortable lead is now getting to be nail biter territory. It's 15 10 lead now for the Musketeers. Serve comes over, pumped up to the front row. Musketeers did finally. Point, Musketeers. So the Musketeers finally able to control that service. There's a good spike attempt. Musketeers got it back across. Nathan's tried to get it across, and the Musketeers hammered it home. 16-10 now to score. Katie Schneider serving. Knuckleball serve. Nathan's third hit goes over the net. Comes up to the front row, set by the Musketeers. Spike is saved by Nathan's. Nathan's third hit is a push over the net. Point, two-handed, a two-handed set over the net for a point. 16-11 to score. Lady Musketeers leading the Lady Jackets. Substitution for New Athens. Number 16 and number three, Emma Bone and Morgan Mann come into the game. Emma comes in to serve. Starting from the right side of the court. Here comes the serve. Musketeers bump it up. And a little confusion by the Musketeer offense. The bump came up to the front, and no one was there to, to uh, take the second hit. So point Jackets, 16-12 now the score. Everything serve comes over to net to the front. Set to the front row, spike, point! <laughs> Megan Henry with the left-handed spikeroo brings it home. Point for the Musketeers, 17 points for the Musketeers, 12 for, for New Athens. Substitution for the Musketeers. Number five, Maggie Dufresne into the game. And number eight, Kayla Nedemar to serve. Overhand serve to the right sideline is saved by the Jackets. Third hit, they just got to hit it across. And not successful, went out of bounds. Point Musketeers. Eighteen to twelve now the Musketeer lead over New Athens. Metamar's next serve comes across, bumped up, across the net, down, down by the Musketeer front line. I couldn't quite tell who put their hand on that, but that was Megan Henry. Megan Henry, the ball came all the way across the net on the bump, and Megan pounded it home. So we're going to go to commercial break here with the score: the Redbud Musketeers nineteen, New Athens Yellow Jackets twelve. We'll be back in a few moments. At Farmers, we've seen almost everything, so we know how to cover almost anything, like the sister sideswipe. And we covered it May 2nd, 2020. 
Call my dad, Danny Schultz, with Farmers Insurance. Welcome back to the castle. Bob Zippel, Ben Koopman with you live with the Scissors Sports Network, Southern Illinois Sports Report with Moke 9 Productions. Musketeers still have the ball. Now, timeout was called by New Athens. Kelly Nettemeyer's serve goes across the net. The third hit by the Jackets is a push over the net, and it's down for a point. I tell you, the uh, Lady Jackets, Ben, are hanging a little tougher this game. It's only a six-point lead yeah. for the Lady Musketeers. 19 to 13 is the score. <clears throat> Musketeers get the serve, bring it up to the front line. Musketeers knock it across. Set to the front row by Noathans. Saved by the Musketeers. All oh, set to the far corner. Here's the spike. Down! <laughs> Hannah Seavers rams it home. Point Musketeers. Two substitutions, number four and 14. Gracie Porter and Allie Zipfel back into the game. Gracie Porter will be serving. Ali Ziff will be on the front line. Musketeers lead 2013. Gracie's first serve comes across. Bumped up to the front. Third hit by the Jackets goes over. Set to the front row by the Musketeers. Point, Musketeers! Megan Henry dinked it across the net. Score now 21-13. Musketeers over the Jackets. Gracie Porter still serving. Nathan's bumps it up for their third hit. Just barely gets it over the net. Musketeers save it, bump it up, and back row hit across the net. A little too strong. Katie Schneider tried to hit that back line, but uh, just a little too strong. Went out of bounds, point for the Jackets. Score now, 21-14. Redbud leading to Athens. Jackets get it over to the front row. Dally Zipfel. Oh, dug up by the Jackets. Good, good, good save by the Jackets. Allie thought she had another point there. Set to the middle. Oh, not. No point there for the Musketeers. Point actually for the Jackets as Megan Henry tried to get that across, but just hit the top of the net and it didn't sque squeeze over. So 21 15 now to score. Jackets serving. Musketeers bump it up to the front line. Third hit, just gonna have to get it over, get it pretty deep. Northens gets it up to the front line. Just dinked it over and a point for the Jackets. So now 21-16. Hanging around. They are hanging around. The Musketeers are letting the Jackets hang around. They, they, they get close and then we get a few points and let them get close, so Northens still serving. Bumped up and over the net, oh! What a play by New Athens, Morgan Mann. The Musketeers, all they could do with that serve was bump it over the net, and New Athens was ready for it and spiked it home back across. So it's now 21-17. Only a four-point lead now for the Lady Musketeers. New Athens still serving. Get it over. Served up to the front row to Allie Zipfel. Point, Musketeers! Allie hit that so hard. All New Athens could do is try to bump it back up to the net and knocked it out of bounds. So a point for the Lady Musketeers, now 22-17. Megan Henry is serving for the Musketeers. Another southpaw server, different spin on the ball. New Athens can't handle it. New Athens tried to bump it up to the front row and that southpaw spin, ball goes out of bounds. Off the jackets, point Musketeers. Now 23-17. Megan Henry still serving. Oh, good hard down spin. Point. Ace. Not much they could do with that they one. They couldn't do anything with that. Ace for Megan Henry. 24-17 now, Musketeers. Good hard, good hard serve. Hits it deep. Gets it to the front line. No, Ethan just bumps it across. Set to Ali Zipfel. Point. Musketeers! Allie rams it home. Nathan's tried to block it to no avail. Allie puts it home. And a winner for the Musketeers. Two quick games. So, uh, Ben, uh, the Musketeers seem to maybe break that 
Production jinx. It wasn't me. <laughs> it wasn't you. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, it was, uh, maybe it was Vicky and Jess. <laughs> yeah, the, uh, the ladies that normally do this uh, had parent-teacher conference tonight, so substituted for them. So a nice win by the Musketeers on senior night. So the lady seniors and their parents can all go home happy tonight. Um, New Athens really just didn't know what to do a whole lot, Ben, with the serves of the Musketeers. No, we were putting them in tough places. They couldn't get to them when, when they could. They were pretty hot to handle. Just, that, just seemed to. That, that, that they were. And then, and then the, the front line of Ali Zipfel and uh, Megan Henry. Uh, no, they just couldn't handle those, those balls as they came across the net with those, uh, with those spikes, those hard spikes. Yeah, when it was set to Ali, you kind of just expected a point. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there for a while she had like three or four in a row. Yep. Just thought, well, okay, it's going Allie's way. It's going to be another <laughs> point for the Musketeers. But yep. uh, uh, she was more successful than not. Let's put it that way. There weren't, there weren't many that didn't get a point whenever she hammered them home. That's right. So that's two in a row for Redbud. Um, any idea who they have next? Uh, no, I am not sure. Figure it out here. I think this might. This was the last home game for Red Bud. So, uh, looks so like they have Sparta on Thursday. Sparta on Thursday at Sparta. Yes. At the Dog Pound. Yes. And that so, looks uh, like that might be their last regular season game. Okay. All right. Then uh, regionals will be starting. So, so Lady Musketeers end on a happy note here at the Castle, home of the Red Bud Musketeers. Coach Legender should be happy. Uh, the ladies played pretty well tonight. The, you know, a few little lapses here and there, but that's going to happen. But uh, all together, uh, they were there. They backed each other up. Student body got behind them. And uh, they brought home a winner, two straight games. And uh, nice win for the Lady Musketeers. Yes, it was. So this is our last fall season uh, broadcast. Okay. Football ended last Friday. This is our last volleyball game. So... I guess so, basketball's next. I'm not yeah. real sure. I haven't seen a schedule yet, but that's probably not till December. November, yeah, because uh, I know the uh, Sparta Midwinter Classic is always in around Christmas. Right. And we usually play a couple weeks before that, so it's yeah. probably around 1st of December. Okay, okay. M maybe they might have, they might play a tournament someplace in November. But uh, you're, you're right, I have not seen a schedule myself yet, so uh, we don't know what that is, but, you know, Oak Nine Productions with Scissor Sports Network will be broadcasting those games live. But uh, not to take away from the Lady Musketeers tonight, it's their night, senior night, right. a nice win for them, the conference win, and uh, improves their overall record and their conference mark. So uh, maybe this will get them in on a roll set for, uh, for regionals. That's right, I'm not sure. I'll have to talk to Aaron on what the schedule is for regionals. But I think if we ever make it to state in any sport, I think we're going to have to do a little traveling. Yeah. See if we can't broadcast wherever they're at. Well, maybe with this nice new castle, we uh, maybe we can land a regional. That'd be nice. I don't know if we've – maybe we have since we had it, but that was always – I always liked the mini castle, but it would have been nice to have a regional at home the, once in a while. The mini castle is very intimidating for volleyball and basketball. I mean, uh, you're in there like a sardine, and it was loud. But uh, – you know, the new castle here is spacious, a lot of great seating. So, folks, I know this is the last volleyball game, but, you know, don't don't forget about next year, the, the Lady Musketeers. They work hard, practice hard. You know, come in and watch some games. Uh, you know, last year was a COVID year. Uh, only parents were allowed and uh, maybe one or two others. But, you know, now it's you have to wear a mask. But, uh, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. If that's the worst that has to happen and we can enjoy high school sports, I'll wear a mask and I'll come support the teams. Absolutely. So we thank everyone for watching tonight. Bob, yeah. thanks for helping out. You're welcome. Fell You're welcome. In. No problem at all. Do a great job. Enjoyed it. First first run at it. Hope it wasn't too butchered up. But uh, <laughs> uh, hope everybody did enjoy it and hope they enjoyed all the games throughout the year. Brought to you by the Scissor Network with Oak Nine Productions. And uh, for tonight, it's Bob Zipfel, Ben Koopman. Appreciate you tuning in, watching. And thank you and good night.